<laughs> Good evening, Mayor, City Council, staff, um, and citizens. Thank you for your time tonight. This is going to be a quick spotlight, um, but I want you to know we're ready. Just like we were last year, we're, we're right now equipping trucks, um, transitioning from leaf collection uh, over the next four weeks through the end of this month into uh, snow removal operations. So with that said, we're monitoring temperatures. We're, we're trying to make sure that we're ready to, do, to perform at a high level just like we did last year. So with that, Dan, please have the floor. Sure. Thank you, thank you. Good evening. Okay, so we uh, just want to kind of go through and give a brief description of our snow operations, um, the equipment that we use, the process that we use. Obviously, every st every storm is different. You know, you have some that come in and wet, and it's raining first, then some come in dry, some are lots of inches, some are, are not very many. And so we monitor that. The guys look at various forecasts and come up with a plan. But I wanted to kind of go through what we typically would do on a normal storm. Um, the city's split up into 10 official routes, and each one of those routes is about the same length. They're about 50 to 53 miles long that, that are covered uh, by the drivers. And so during an event, um, if it's a large event where we've got to have everybody and we do 12 hour shifting, and my job previous from coming back to here, we weren't big enough to do that, and it was it was dangerous. Um, we you know did the best we could to stagger people coming in. We had costs for people to sleep on, but if there was one of those large events where you're in there for 20 some hours or 30 some hours, we were in there, um, and they would take breaks and get get a couple hours here and there. Luckily here we've had we have the uh, manpower to be able to do 12 hour shifts. Um, so the guys are getting rested, they're on for 12 hours, and then there's another crew coming in, and they're on for 12 hours. Um, that's that's a huge blessing. We run typically run about 17 trucks if it's an all all in all shift um, route. We have the 10 routes that I showed you on that map, and then we have four tandem trucks that also have wing plows on them. I don't know if you've seen those run around, but those are the big trucks that have the extra blade out to the side. Use those on the state routes. Really cleans things up in a hurry. Um, we're lucky enough to have four of those, and then we have two uh, smaller trucks that can kind of get down some of those streets that we have where you've got the you know double parking on both sides um, really narrow hard to get through and you just can't get the larger trucks through there we've got a couple of those um, they also clear the parking lots we have several parking lots that we're in charge of so there's also a crew leader truck um, that can assist in small areas to clean out some intersections or um, you know just run around and see how the streets are looking and, and keep an eye on, on how we're keeping up with things um, if we can and things are going well, we would like to have two or three trucks kept in reserve so that if something goes down, a plow stops working, you know, something breaks, we've got another one. That we don't have a route that's missing a truck that can swap out, get in another vehicle and take care of things like they, like they always do. We also have someone that's in the loader the full time. Um, they're out at the salt barn and keeping everybody rolling with salt so that there's no downtime. The truck can just come in, get in the spot, get loaded up and, and get back after it. The other thing we want to do, we've talked with the guys, we've brought a couple of our, uh, our main guys that have been here a while. They're crew leaders, they know what they're doing, they've been out there fighting these things and battling them year after year. Um, we kind of brought them in and thought it might be ring, fun to bring in them for the spotlight. Um, you can ask them any questions that you're thinking, hey, I would like to ask one of the guys that's really out there in the front lines doing this thing. Um, any of those kind of questions at the end. And we talked to them and said, hey, what topics would you think that you know we might want to discuss with uh, council on? So these are, these are those. Um, Chris is going to head that up on, and cover the first couple, and then Eddie's going to take after, and then I'll finish back up. This is Chris. <laughs> this is Chris. Yourself, buddy. Yep. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Miller. I'm a crew leader for the street department. I've uh, been there 28 years now. And I uh, want to discuss a couple topics with you. First of all, uh, when we come in for a snow operation, we got to uh, assess everything that's going on, the temperature. One of the main things we got to check on is the ground temperature. Now the ground temperature is different than the air temperature. It kind of fluctuates back and forth. If it's been a real sunny day, the ground temperature is going to rise slowly. But if it's cold and overcast, the ground temperature is going to go down, which means it's going to freeze quicker. Now uh, that 
doing the ground temperature, that's what we look at for how we prepare for our operation when we throw our salt. Now, the next topic is the pre-wetting of the salt. Normally, if we go out temperature, you know, 30 degrees, 32 degrees, the ground temperature is a little higher than that normally. So we would just throw salt. And if it gets a little colder than that, we pre-wet the salt with calcium chloride, which basically activates the salt even more. And uh, when we can pre-wet, it brings us cost savings of about 20% in salt to the city, uh, the amount of salt we have to use. And uh, it helps when we spread the salt in the, cr in the crown of the road. It keeps the salt in the middle, keeps everything compact and and just uh, does a better job of working. So that's about all I'm going to be in here with. And next is Eddie Welsh. He's going to come up and tell you some more things. Good evening. Good my, evening. Name, my name is Eddie Welch. Uh, I've been with the city for 11 years now. I um, wanted to talk about uh, the plowing that we do. <clears throat> the way we go about the, the snow removal is we break the, the 10 routes down into primaries and secondaries. Um, <coughs> We, we, tip, we, we typically run through all of our primary streets, plow all, uh, all the snow off of that best we can, and then we go into our secondary streets. Um, your, your primary roads are your, your main roads, your bridges, and your main hills. Um, let's see. Um, during the snow event, we work through the primary streets, and when, and when we plow the snow from the center to the curb, and, and then at that point, like I said, we go into the secondary streets. Um, if there's ever a, a significant snowfall, uh, that we're, we're just constantly battling snow, trying to keep up with it. We usually stick at that point to our primary streets until it's safe to go into our secondary streets. So if the snow's ever flying and you're wondering why your street's not getting done, it's just because we're focusing on the primary roads. So just kind of bear with us and we will get there. Um, let's see. There's also some things that the public can do to kind of help us clean up the snow faster. Uh, the first thing is trying to limit the traffic on the roads. Um, if you don't have to go out during snow events, you know, that would help us out a lot. Um, if you do have to go out, uh, give our drivers some room, you know, try not to tailgate them. Or if you see our tandem trucks, you know, try not to go in between when we're throwing the snow because that could potentially be dangerous. So please just watch out for us and give us some space. Um, another possible thing is um, if you could, if all, all of the, the narrow streets, if you could possibly move your vehicles into driveways or your garage if you have one. And um, um, what, what else did I have here? All oh, the, the snow blowers. <laughs> the big problem for, for the, the route that I'm in is um, I'll run the route, it'll be nice and clean, and I'll come through, and somebody with a big industrial snow blower has blown everything into the street. So like, that, that, that creates a hazard. So if you could blow the snow into, the, into your yard or keep it on the curbside, that, that would help us out a lot too, as well. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Um, the same thing as, as uh, cleaning out around your car. Just, just try to keep it on the curbside, please. And that's it. Thank you. Okay. Mayor, if, just one comment I wanted to make to make sure that uh, people understand. I am so very, very proud of these men. They are just consummate professionals. They work from 630 till we tell them to stop. And that's something that's special. So. They're here to support the citizens, of course, um, and our infrastructure. And I just wanted to make sure that was uh, felt because it's real. And so I'll let Dan wrap up. Sure, absolutely. Uh, this, this next topic isn't quite as exciting as the other ones. Most people don't like it, but uh, mailbox damage. It happens every year. It's part of the things that we do. The city's policy, which is it's uh, standard with other cities too that I've been with and talked to, is that we are responsible if we strike it. If, if the, you know, and you can usually see that the track and whatnot, if we actually strike the mailbox, we're responsible for it. Obviously, you know, we look at each one on a case by case basis and go out, talk with the president, you know, see what it is. But um, a lot of them are because it's probably the first post you put in when the house was built, you know, 15, 20 years ago, hasn't been replaced and it's rotten and it, you know, would have fallen anyway. So I did put out an article once. Uh, another job where I put out the shake your mailbox thing. Don't know if anybody ever read it, but <laughs> put out, hey, shake your mailbox, check it, see how it is beforehand. Might not have went anywhere, but it was kind of fun. 
Um, the other thing we wanted to do, honestly, is just invite you guys out. Um, I mean, these guys are great. They know what they're doing. You learn so much from them. I know some of you have been out there and, and rode along with these guys. But, I mean, that's really where you learn how they do it and, and the intricacies of it. There's so many things that they're doing on the fly. Decisions are being made on the fly. They're changing the salt amount, changing, you know, where they're at and the locations. And, that, and it's just, it, it flows so well when they're the professionals that they are. Um, so if you get the opportunity, come right along with them. Mr. Mayor. Please. Dan, would we contact you or Jim to schedule it, that? Either one. Let us okay. know. Just shoot us something and we'll, we'll make it happen. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Mayor. I've yes. had the privilege of riding along, and I understand the challenges that you have, and I applaud your efforts. It's amazing to me, some of those narrow streets, how you're even able to maneuver around. And as much as I appreciate what you do for snow and ice, I appreciate the leaf pickup as well. I live in an area where there are a bazillion leaves, and I can count on you guys even on the weekends. It doesn't matter. You show up for leaves, then you show up for snow. So thank you. It's really appreciated. That's very kind. We'll let the guys know. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mr. Mayor. Please. When we declare a um, snow emergency in the city, is there an expectation that cars move off of the street? I know some cities have signs that if it's a snow emergency, your car has to go. <clears throat> Do we have that here in Hamilton? So. Yeah. Um, um, we do not have signage um, in a lot of our, our, our residential areas. Now, in some of our, I think our main primaries, we, I believe we do, and I, and I can't confirm that, but I'll have to get with Scott Hoover to confirm that, and we can get back with you on that. Um, I just wonder, because I, I thought a lot about those streets where there are cars on both sides, and, that's and exactly how challenging, because you end up burying a car that's parked there. So. It's to the advantage of the resident, perhaps, to move the car. But I just didn't know how that worked for us. Yes, ma'am. And But let me get back to you on that. Because that, I believe we do have some streets there is no emergency signage. But um, on a lot of our residential streets, no, we do not. Thank you all. Mr. Yeah. Mayor. So, uh, yes, so the hard part here, obviously, is that we've got such a mixed use in Hamilton of the different types of streets that we have and where you can post and where you could not. Um, in the other community I, I worked for, we had a bunch of cul-de-sacs. Well, cul-de-sac, there's something different every 20 feet. You've got a driveway, you've got a mailbox, you've got a fire hydrant that you can't block. There's two spots that you can put it, as, and that's in the mouth when you're coming in to the cul-de-sac, and that's where everybody parks. Yeah. So <laughs> those, those took the last two spots you could have put the snow. Um, very unpopular to put it in there. So we did post those and put those up during snow emergencies that keep them out of the cul-de-sacs, because everybody's in the cul-de-sac has a driveway they could put them in, so it's not... Like it's one of the streets where you can't, where they just don't have the driveways. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. The question I have is, what do you, how do you promote, like, do you do a promotion of your um, tips that you would like the uh, citizens do, like, you know, parking in their driveway, and how do we promote that or, you know, not blowing snow out in the street? How could... Anybody, can it be on Facebook sites that we can share? Just anything. I, I just wonder how you do that now. So, um, so Councilman, we do have um, a website that we do publish some tips. We also have text to power where we communicate via text messages for those accounts um, or citizens throughout the um, city that have utility accounts and that have cell phones registered. We actually communicate that way as well. And so some of you might have received a text uh, regarding your leaf oh, pickup. Oh yeah, I get those all the time. Those are great. And so, so that it, hopefully that helps with the efficiency of getting the leaves to the curb and then of course getting the leaves collected. Um, we're just now starting to use this text to power power to its full capability. So have we used it with um, snow removal yet? No. Um, should we? Possibly. And so we're still considering that. Um, we didn't really get into, and I think next is, uh, did we have a slide on yeah. the snow informer? Yep. So the snow informer is, um, is another tool that Dan will talk to. But to answer your question fully, yes, sir, we can do that. But we just have not, uh, and we will. And I was wondering, like, since we stuff stuff in the utility bills and, you know, some information there, not everybody does text, of course. So I'm just wondering if you're planning to do a lot, a lot more, because I know, unfortunately, I plowed before, you know, and um, had to do it. Not, not um, I've spent long days doing it, and I really feel for you guys. You do a great job. It's tough, and you get very tired, and I, 
I, I can't say enough about what you guys do on that. So I know I wasn't a fan of doing it myself. But, these, so, sir, these guys do not get these, tired. These guys they, do a good job. I, they don't get tired, sir. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah. About six, seven hours, I was dying. <laughs> so, no, they do a good job. So thank you. Just get started, right? Yeah. All right. Anything else at this point on, on these items? No, I just want to say, Mr. Manager, thank you for having the professionals yeah, come talk to us because they're part of our great city team and they represent us very well. Dan, before you go, I, I just um, just a comment based on Councilperson Vaughn's uh, 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 question. But um, first, uh, Chris and Eddie, thank you. Uh, you do tremendous work. I've been able to write along also. And I was actually going to comment on what you, you questioned them about. Coming out of Wisconsin, um, we had the ability, being a, a more suburban uh, community where people had to remove their cars off the street uh, during snow events. And the first time I did a ride along here, I was stunned at the number of cars that were on the street. That makes it exponentially more difficult to do their jobs. And the fact that they do it with such precision um, is uh, thank you to you and your entire group that does that. But um, I just remember the first two or three times I did a ride along just seeing the number of cars. and. Uh, you know, you have some houses where you might have, you know, six to eight cars because it's a, a multifamily house that has no garage, no off-street parking, no driveway, and they have to stay on the street. And, and being an old city, our streets are incredibly narrow in a lot of the uh, areas that were developed pre probably 1940 or 50. Um, and it, it just, if you've never been in, a, in an older city, uh, you don't fully appreciate how difficult that job is. But um, it's... You, unfortunately, we can't mandate cars off the street because there's literally no place to put them. But um, in many cases, there's not a place to put them. But, but kudos to you for the job that you do with all the obstacles in the way. Having worked in Oxford for many years, and they had it in place. I mean, the streets were beautiful, but I know for law enforcement or whoever has to come and tow these vehicles, it can be a nightmare and the students come home and where's my car? Yeah. So, but I just wondered, thank you. Yeah. The last slide we had is just real quick. It was the, it's a screenshot of uh, that Snow Informer app that we were talking about. That's on my Hamilton uh, website. And on the, on the side of it, you have the first one is treatment status. So you can click on that one. It'll actually show where the plows are located, where they've been, where they were in the last couple hours, the last eight hours. It's very informative. Then the middle one, if you scroll through it while you're on, the, on that area, it's, it's the street priority list. So it shows what streets are priority, the reasons why, gives a little description. Um, again, very helpful. And then at the bottom is just some frequently asked questions. There's a bunch of snow questions like you had mentioned earlier. Where are those? There are some of those that are covered under that last tab there. So if you get on that snow from wrap. We did some tweaks at the off season, at the end of last snow season, to make it better for this year. I think it'll be pretty good. So. Hey. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank Thanks. you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all. Thank you.